So, uh, uh, hello, uh, just to give you a very brief uh, recap, uh, we were discussing about laser induced fluorescence and in a few seconds I will just show you what we were discussing. So, we have this, uh, uh, we have this, uh, this energy nuclear coordinate diagram where essentially the OH was uh, residing in the ground state and the incident laser comes and hits the OH molecule, it gets promoted to a higher electronic state, undergoes inter system crossing, gets down to the lower electronic state and uh, then goes back to the ground state, uh, the, gr the original vibrational state uh, because of inter system crossing in the lower electronic state. But while crossing this, while going down from the higher electronic state to the lower electronic state, it essentially emitted uh, the photon because of the energy difference and uh, this photon uh, is emitted is essentially the fluorescence that we can collect and using that, uh, that we can, um, the number of photons collected, we can correlate it essentially to the uh, to the uh, mole fraction of OH radicals that are present in the uh, in the original state before the light hit the uh, OH molecule. Okay, so this is the uh, essentially the the the, the thing that. Uh, and that we have uh, this uh, ground state, so the laser is uh, so the OH absorbs, it gets promoted to the higher uh, states, and then uh, some intersystem crossings, and then it goes down to fluorescence. And there can be another thing called phosphorescence, but uh, fluorescence happens much faster. Fluorescence, phosphorescence at, uh, happens at a much uh, slower uh, rate, and that it takes more time, so it can be easily distinguished. And as such, uh, in the energy level, you see this is the 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 absorbed energy is always higher. Uh, than the than the than the, the fluorescence uh, energy and as a result if this is blue in color if this is the fluorescence can is essentially green in color but it does not happen typically wavelengths like if you want to do oh uh, laser induced fluorescence the absorption wavelength is about 283.6 uh, uh, nanometers and the emission of the fluorescence wavelength is essentially 310 nanometers so it's not that big of a difference it's not like blue and green but um, uh, it's uh, slightly higher than the uh, emitted uh, wavelength Okay. Now, here uh, we need to address uh, two questions that is uh, what governs whether the transition will take place or not. That is how do we choose the laser wavelength. As I said that we if we just shine any light into it we cannot have um, uh, the we cannot have uh, um, uh, the, the fluorescence and uh, the second thing is that uh, how do we model the emitted fluorescence signal that is how do we correlate this uh, the intensity of the light to the number density of the mole fraction of OH. Okay. So, that is the, uh, the these things because uh, these are the two most important thing considerations and we will take it up in a little bit fundamental manner. So, what essentially happens? So, what is light matter interaction? What happens when a li laser light comes and hits a molecule? So, suppose this is the uh, this is the molecule, this is the center of mass, these are the is a diameter atomic molecule. So, and then uh, uh, then a light which is essentially an electromagnetic wave comes and hits the molecule. Okay. So, uh, this electromagnetic wave has a dipole moment associated with it and that is given by uh, this thing that is a position vector times the charge. Okay. And uh, now, uh, since this uh, this is the dipole moment of this uh, of the molecule, okay, uh, this is uh, the the dipole moment which is an intrinsic property of this molecule. Okay. So, that is given by mu is equal to the, the position vector of the two um, uh, of the two atoms, uh, the center of mass of the uh, 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 this uh, this uh, or this uh, the center of mass or this uh, the electronic clouds around it and uh, the, the, the charge of this uh, this electron uh, electron cloud. Okay. So, that is given by that is the dipole moment and now consider an electric field which is comes and hits this molecule and the electric field is given by E vector. Okay. So, the additional potential energy that this molecule gets because of the interaction with the electric field is essentially this guy that is the dot product of this dipole moment vector times the electric field. Okay. Now, the electric field of course, as you know is, a, uh, is essentially the electromagnetic field has a perpendicularly oscillating magnetic field and it can be uh, 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 resolved into this. Now, what this electronic uh, electromagnetic field does is that it essentially introduces a perturbation on the Schrodinger wave equation that governs this molecule. We will not go into this just to uh, show you briefly that if this is the, um, uh, the Schrodinger the time dependent Schrodinger wave equation. So, it introduces a perturbation on this H 0 which is the normal state and this is the uh, this H prime is the part of the part of state. Okay. And then uh, what we can uh, essentially show that is that the the, sh the the wave function thus thus uh, formed out of this uh, this uh, this perturbed uh, Schrodinger wave equation. Okay. And uh, we can um, uh, uh, essentially we can uh, do some uh, some analysis, and uh, and it can be shown that that uh, that this light 
uh, can be absorbed by this molecule when it satisfied certain criteria. Okay. So, the whether this light will be absorbed by this uh, molecule or not that is given by this transitional dipole moment which is essentially this, uh, mm, uh, this uh, integral okay, uh, that is uh, mm, given by this uh, complex conjugate of this wave function the dipole moment and then this uh, the, uh, the, uh, the wave function integrated over the entire uh, volume of the molecule and this essentially gives us the probability of the transition. So, essentially it boils down because this is xi i and xi j whereas this is say for the lower state and this is for the higher state. So, essentially it boils down that if the wave function of the lower state is like this then the wave uh, function of the higher state is like this and if these two uh, and this, uh, this is i and this is j and if these two wave functions have sufficient overlap then this becomes large okay uh, then this becomes large whereas if this uh, wave functions are uh, like that that um, if uh, there is a wave function which is like this so then the overlap is small then this quantity becomes small and then as a result of that the mu tr that is a transition dipole moment becomes small so essentially the transition dipole moment is a probability that that uh, that, are, uh, that whether the transition can happen so when the wave functions of the ground state of the lower state and the upper state are matching can overlap and uh, significantly then this transition dipole moment is a large value and that tells that the absorption can happen. So, essentially it depends uh, uh, so that, that essentially governs uh, whether, the, whether the light will be absorbed by the OH molecule or not. So, uh, but essentially we do not when we do experiments we do not need to calculate this transition dipole moment any time or every time. We have this software called leaf base etcetera from which we can see that where the, uh, the laser light can be absorbed and emitted. Okay. So, from that we essentially get the reference that for so from that for OH leaf okay, um, uh, laser induced fluorescence you select uh, you need to select uh, laser uh, wavelength of say 283.6 nanometers. Okay. So, this is typically the guideline. There are, there are reasons why this wavelengths are chosen. There can be other wavelengths also which can be chosen around this and uh, uh, there are to be other considerations that this wavelength should not be temperature sensitive if you are only interested in measuring the concentration or if you want to use temperature to uh, temperature measurements using leaf OH leaf techniques then you have to choose some other wavelengths so on and so forth. We will not go into that. The next question is that but essentially the, the what I want to tell you is that that whether the light will be absorbed by OH is a very important thing because if there is no absorption then there is no fluorescence. Okay. In fundamentally the absorption is essentially guided by this quantity okay, that is a transition dipole moment. But in practice we find out that particular wavelength from the different softwares uh, which is already contains this analysis documented. Then the question is that okay, suppose we now are in a position to choose a particular laser and a particular wavelength of that light, uh, but now then after we get the signal suppose we get a strong uh, signal in some region, suppose we get a weak signal in some region. Now using that the strength of the signal that uh, suppose here we get an intensity of like uh, 200 counts in some place we get an intensity of like 10 counts. By using that 200 count how can we tell what is the mole fraction? How can we tell that the 200 counts correspond to a mole fraction of 0.2 or corresponds to a mole fraction of 0.6? Okay, so that uh, is a, essentially we need to model the emitted fluorescence signal. So single photon laser induced fluorescence once again is a simplified model. Uh, this is done by this considering this two uh, or this all this um, uh, by this this formal rate equation governing the time dependent uh, population that is um, uh, this uh, 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 NJ is essentially the population uh, density of this number of molecules at the uh, uh, among a set of levels i it is uh, essentially the population at this level j among a given uh, 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 or this this is essentially the um, uh, the uh, 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 this this essentially the of uh, the species uh, uh, j among a different levels i okay so the, uh, the number of uh, population density of the species j and a given level is uh, uh, um, um, uh, sorry, this is NJ is essentially the population uh, of a given species in the level J okay, among different levels I. Okay. So, I is essentially the counter which goes I goes from 1 to N. So, you can also J. So, this is the population. So, uh, say this is J and this is I. Okay. So, we have several populations of J here and several populations of I, I here. So, this is essentially NJ and this is essentially NI. Okay. And this there can be like multiples of such. So, the rate of change of population of this OH, uh, so this is the higher state 
this is the lower state. So, the rate of change of population of this uh, uh, number density of molecules um, in the level j is essentially given by the number of uh, the by the by the addition into that level okay uh, uh, by the by the uh, 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 addition in the level which populate j and uh, this is the by by the loss which basically depopulate j okay and these are essentially the rate constants by which uh, this uh, molecule from uh, i to j is transferred in a this is a complicated model but in a just in a two level model we can show that this is uh, this is the one level this is two level so and these are the different constants whereas uh, this b constants b12 is essentially the einstein b constant is a, is the absorption uh, co coefficient this is the emission uh, coefficient mm, and uh, this is a spontaneous emission coefficient which is corresponds to the fluorescence a21 okay 12 means the uh, absorption coefficient uh, uh, for going from state 1 to state state 2 and uh, so this is this is can be corresponds to this uh, uh, level that we had uh, shown before right mm, that uh, these are the different states uh, like this okay so this is the lower level this is the higher level so the oh essentially is going from this level to this level and it's essentially coming down okay so that is what is uh, what you want to show here uh, briefly and um, uh, you can also i mean if you are interested you should look into this uh, uh, this paper by hansen stridsman paul who essentially uh, uh, brought uh, made um, you know, the the first uh, planar laser induced fluorescence measurements okay so uh, this uh, uh, this is this in this uh, two level um, model we have uh, uh, from uh, level 1 to level 2 uh, b uh, you know, 1 2 uh, is the Einstein B coefficient uh, A21 is the Einstein A coefficient for spontaneous emission and Q21 IJ or Q21 is the uh, collision transfer coefficient. Now, as you see that in OH when it goes to excited state it has a lot of energy kinetic energy it is can collide with surrounding molecules like nitrogen molecules like oxygen molecules and it can lose some energy also. So, that also needs to be quantified and as such this collision becomes very very important in high pressure environments uh, collision loss. Uh, so, that essentially changes the wavelength because you see if you down to because if you collide uh, very heavily in a higher energy state you will essentially lose a lot of energy and you will come down to a lower vibrational state. So, uh, the since the wavelength the emission wavelength etcetera the intensity can also change because of that ok. So, now this can be simplified into this uh, that uh, you can find out what is the rate of change of the population density in the second state and that is given by uh, this uh, supply in from the first state. Mm, uh, this is uh, and uh, this is the reduction from the second state ok. So, it is like a like a this uh, that uh, like this control uh, volume analysis. So, mm, rate of change of uh, uh, mass inside a control volume is equal to the influx minus outflux ok. Mm, uh, so, that is the, the is equal to the the, the number uh, the rate of and the rate of change of the uh, mass in the in the control volume uh, is uh, equal to the influx minus outflux. So, exactly this is the same that is uh, mm, uh, the rate of change of uh, the uh, the number uh, density of particles at the level 2 is essentially the influx from state 1 and the outflux from uh, state 2. Okay. Now, uh, before uh, we have a uh, uh, before the laser uh, uh, we can say that um, that uh, before the laser pulse that is uh, before the laser pulse has hit this OH molecule the level 2 has a negligible population and ends, ends N2 at t equal to 0 is 0. So, that is fine. So, uh, and also the number of because the number of uh, uh, particles or the number of molecules are conserved just like mass. So, the N1 plus N2 is equal to constant and that is equal to N10 which is, is equal to N1 at time t equal to 0 ok. So, N10 means this thing N1 at time t equal to 0 that is so N1 essentially means that if this was the uh, ground state and this is the upper excited state. So, uh, N1 is the number of uh, populations at t equal to 0. Okay. And this is a very important thing because this is what we want to measure ok. We are not interested in measuring N2 or, uh, or N1 at other times we want to measure what is the concentration by, by, by collecting the light we want to measure what is the concentration or the number density of molecules before the laser hit the molecule ok. So, this is uh, what we want to measure and uh, so it can be like this. Um, so, uh, because of the overlap suppose this goes into this state ok 
and uh, this this OH goes into this state and then it will uh, by crossing it will come to this state and it will go to this state. So, this is the um, my uh, the my uh, my fluorescence ok. So, so uh, then we need to essentially find out the, the intensity of the light collected as a function we want to find intensity as a function of n 1 0 ok that is this guy which is equal to n 1 at time t equal to 0. So, how do we do that? So, we can essentially write n 2 in terms of n 1 by in using this uh, if we integrate it we can write it like this uh, in terms of our uh, time constant which is this and uh, then we can find out ultimately that uh, the steady state fluorescence rate that is the number of photons emitted due to fluorescence per unit volume per unit time is essentially given by this quantity ok. So, this is R p is essentially at n 1 0. Uh, a 2 1 times n 1 0 at steady state and uh, this is the thing ok. So, uh, you see now here we get n 1 0. So, that is what we want. So, uh, then finally, what we can do is that we can do all these things that uh, there can be different situations when the, uh, the, 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 the we can have saturated fluorescence, we can have unsaturated fluorescence. So, anyways, uh, saturated fluorescence means when the even after putting light you do not have uh, you have basically saturated the upper state. So, then you do not have any more, more molecules coming into that. So, then the essentially the intensity of light becomes an, uh, cannot be any proportional to the number of uh, um, uh, uh, cannot be uh, it is all always proportional to the number of molecules, but um, uh, it is uh, it is in a different state it does not uh, uh, corresponds to quenching it is a different state, but uh, affairs, but uh, when uh, what we have is that when uh, the intensity of light is less than the threshold uh, for saturation uh, we have the rate of fluorescence to be given by this ok. Okay. We have the, uh, the rate of fluorescence is essentially directly proportional to the number density of particles uh, before it uh, uh, hit the uh, before it hit the laser light um, uh, before the laser light hit the molecules. This uh, Einstein B coefficient I nu is the is the laser intensity. Okay. So, larger the laser intensity larger is the rate of fluorescence and then this um, Einstein A coefficient and this quenching factor. But when I nu is greater than I nu sat that is uh, then you see that it does not depend on the laser light anymore. So, uh, more putting in more laser light does not change your uh, fluorescence output mm, and it is given by this thing. Also, you see that there is no quenching ok. So, finally, what we can find is that that the number of photons hitting the photodetector that is what is of most, most importance. Uh, so, that is a little bit uh, mm, of a complicated uh, mm, uh, that is a little bit of a complicated uh, 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 formula that we get. So, but this is uh, if you do the entire analysis this is uh, what we find that the number number of photons number of fluorescence photon hitting the photodetector because that will corresponds to my my intensity count in my camera ok. There is a transmission efficiency there is a collection solid angle this is a fractional population of the lower uh, laser coupled state and then this is the most important thing ok. Let me highlight this in red. Uh, this is what we are after that is you see that n p that is a number of photons is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the absorbing species. Of course, it depends on the gas number density, volume, Einstein B coefficient and spectral fluence of the laser etcetera and these other coefficients you see quenching is also important uh, quenching is also present, but ultimately uh, when all the other factors are constant which we need to somehow calibrate. Uh, so, calibration in uh, to get quantitative uh, fluorescence uh, calibration is a very important exercise, uh, but uh, uh, the thing is that at the end uh, if you do that your NP that is the number of uh, photons number of fluorescence photons hitting the photodetector is proportional to the mole fraction of the absorbing species. So, if you are doing OH belief then the number of photons hitting it is essentially proportional to x mole fraction of OH. So, and as you see the mole fraction is extremely important we can convert to mass fractions etcetera also, but uh, mole fraction is a very very important uh, measurement uh, that we need to do in combustion. So, that will tell you where the reaction is uh, proceeding in what uh, to what degree. Okay. So, using this uh, we see that we can essentially find out uh, that uh, using laser induced fluorescence the number of photons uh, fluorescence photon that is hitting the photodetector. So, which will uh, appear as a strong intensity or weak intensity is directly proportional to the mole fraction of weight. So, this is the uh, this is the bottom line from this exercise 
So, on one hand we choose the wavelength by using uh, by fundamentally depends on the transition dipole moment, but as such it depends on the um, uh, it depends on the um, uh, we can find that out from the leaf base, but essentially you see that the number of photons or the uh, fluorescence intensity that we collect in the camera is essentially proportional to the mole fraction of OH. Okay. So, uh, quenching corrections is to be done when the pressure is high, but I will not uh, go into that uh, anyways. And uh, so, what we find here is that this NP there is a number of photons um, uh, hitting the it detector is proportional to mole fraction. So, as such uh, the stronger the intensity the stronger in the population of the absorbing species. Okay. So, this is very important because you see that uh, that OH absorbs 283 nanometers. Okay. So, you see you have we have not talked about one point one beauty about this method is that that in combustion uh, reactions when you have you can have thousands and thousands of species. Okay. Uh, so, we want to measure one particular species out of the thousand OH. So, because of this very beautiful uh, fact that only OH absorbs at 283 nanometers. OH molecule and this lays and this light has a such a beautiful coupling of 283 nanometers that out of the 1000 we can only absorb only ensure that OH is being uh, is, uh, is absorbing this light and nothing else. And uh, from that if we can find out the number of fluorescence uh, photons that is by, by collecting the light from a camera we can find out the concentration of OH. So, even in this soup of species we can find out the color, color this thing of OH. Of course, it is not that simple it depends this light depends on other uh, factors and population of other molecules also, uh, but to the most extent to the to the to the order 1 it depends on the population of OH if we choose 23 nanometers and uh, essentially we can find out the concentration of OH in a soup of other molecules. But if you want to do quantitative fluoro laser induced fluorescence, then it is not straightforward. One needs to be uh, one needs to do a series of calibrations and needs to have an idea about what kind of other molecules are present. But uh, typically, qualitatively, we can find out that uh, higher the fluorescence intensity, higher is the uh, mole fraction of that molecule at that uh, region. Okay, uh, we will we'll, you will be able to appreciate this when we give you examples. And using this laser induced fluorescence, we will try to see how we can solve uh, phenomena of uh, practical interest. So, how what do we need to do uh, what do we need uh, for doing PLIF uh, or this laser induced uh, this is uh, this stands for uh, planar laser ok. So, uh, for that we first need a NDAG laser which is a pump laser and then we did a doubling crystal uh, dye laser with a doubling crystal. So, the NDAG laser essentially pumps uh, this dye laser and this uh, by dye laser gives a wavelength that uh, uh, say to uh, which can be tuned to 283 nanometers. You need a camera to detect the photon and you need an intensifier because uh, intensity is too small and also you need to gate it so that you can you do not collect other emissions you only collect uh, the the fluorescence emission in a very short amount of time and of course you need optics and calibration accessories and you need some image processing also so this is our uh, uh, the facility that we have at IISC at uh, the gas turbine combustion lab uh, so this is our dye laser Okay, and uh, the, so the, this is our NDA laser, which uh, pumps the dye laser um, uh, through this uh, fiber optics and mirrors, and then this dye laser sends out this light. Mm, uh, so a dye laser light comes out here, and then this passes to this sheet making optics, which makes a sheet. And we have essentially a model gas turbine combustor here, and we shine light on that, and what we get is something like this. Okay. So, you see that uh, you see this uh, uh, this uh, this is a turbulent flame. So, that is why you have a distorted flame structure it is essentially a this this uh, setup represents a sector of a, of a gas turbine combustor, but at uh, lower pressure. Mm, uh, so, you see clearly that uh, by this laser induced fluorescence we are clearly able to find out which are the flame locations. So, for example, uh, we can easily find out uh, using image processing that these are flame locations is something like this because that is where OH goes rises up sharply. Okay. So, and also 
so we can find out that why we can t find try to find out why this uh, reaction is happening at a at a fast uh, at a, at, a, at a why the reaction is uh, why OH production is strong at certain regions and the OH production is less at certain regions. So this is the typical PLIF uh, signal that you get. Uh, of course, here we combine with uh, something like uh, was called uh, particle image velocity metry or velocimetry also, because as I said that in combustion two things are important: kinetics and uh, uh, and uh, uh, fluid mechanics. So uh, from this uh, by this spliff you can quantify the, uh, the 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 intermediate concentrations to a uh, to a uh, to a first order. Okay. Now we need to understand the flow field, and for that we need to do the uh, particle image velocimetry, which will be uh, taken up in the next class. Thank you.